إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ويهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوة الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث من هما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا قناة سليلة يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير كلامك كلام الله وأحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشعر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة البدعة كل بدعة الضلالة كل الضلالة في الله. This is just a brief reminder to the fact that I apologize to everyone for being extremely busy in these days. So the end of the day, I'll try to attain benefit from what I have advised my brothers and sisters in Washington, D.C. I think everyone in this entire society, either a Muslim or a Catholic, have both realized that all the affairs are hitting the fan. There's more chaos, more turmoil, as far as in the society, here in America. But of course, with the light of Minna, as the Salafiyin in Islam, but Salafiyya on a wajah al-khusus, no matter that specific, no doubt, is spread. So for that aspect, it is positive. <clears throat> but the surrounding fitan of what affects all of us, whether directly or indirectly, as we know, is becoming more in abundance. And the dangers of what encompasses, encompasses all of us from our if you want to say all the Muslims all around the world, as the now the fitan has taken a new color, as fitan of what is pertaining to the heart, like we said, Yom Ashur Bichwa now is becoming a little bit more inconspicuous and more confusing. As now the people of falsehood, as we know, in these days and times, all of them claim Salafi now, especially in the 90s. When we here in Germantown, a lot of us thought were from the, the mid-90s or before that. Saying Salafi in Philadelphia was taboo. It was like you came with a new madhab. It was like you came with a new type of madhab here. Back in the 90s, when we were here. When his brother's side was on the other side. So the brothers know that all of us know this matter for those who were here during the 90s. Because I became Muslim here in this masjid. On the other, in this, when the mother's side was on the sister's side. I became Muslim in 1995 here at this message. So for, uh, for what, back in those days, using the word Salafi was taboo. It was like, were you coming with a new method? So now to the point, <clears throat> in these days and times, the, the fitan has switched and went to a new, new direction, to a new type of confusion, where everybody claims Salafi. They use the word Salafi, in order to broaden the horizon and bring into it, or bring someone into it who's not from it, whatsoever. Everybody claims they said of you now. Even if you're Ikhwani, even if you have principles of the Ikhwani, you still, as long as you use the word said of you, said of you. Even though you profess this da'wah mubarakah, or this blessed da'wah, but that which nullifies it, or everything, or every matter that nullifies it, you can do it as long as you say you're, you're Salafi. 
that is now the new wave of which we'll find in which people are brought in the horizon, which is, we know, the methodology of the, basically the Ikhwaniyin, as coming with the new minhaj, what they call it, minhaj al wasi al afih this broad type of methodology to enter into Saravia who's not from it. Or you can do, or you can commit acts that necessitates its nullification or its invalidity, but as long as you say the word, you're okay. So like we said now, this is the new wave of fitan where the people who ascribe to this minhaj mubarak or this blessed da'wah are now trying to creep in our ranks and destroy us from within. That's the new color now. They creep in the ranks and they come under the guise of claiming their son of him and they wear the clothes like Ahl Sunnah and they wear their ankle and they wear their butt, they close up on their ankles and they have they grow their beards like us, they look just like us. But however they're not from us. And that's the new test, what we're testing with these days and times. You'll find that Ahl Sunnah, especially from Shaykh al Islam and Taymiyyah rahimahullah, <clears throat> during his time, as we know, the trials of tribulation he was facing, you'll find that he took a lot of time to refute the Asha'ira. To the point where a lot of people used to ask, what was, what's your problem? What's, what's with you and the Asha'ira so much? Why are you focus on them so much? It was asked him, what is your, basically in these days of times, a person would say, what's your beef with this person? Why do you keep singling him out specifically and refuting him? The reason why Shaykh al-Islam singled out the Asha'ira in these days, of time, in his days, rahimahullah, is because, because of the confusion. Out of people being confused that the Asha'ira will be from Ahl Sunnah and they're not from them. Because those who look like you and impersonate you and speak like you, and talk like you, grow your beard like you, or wear the clothes like you, they're the most deserving to be singled out more than anyone else. Because they're the ones who can cause the most confusion. So that's the reason why you'll find that a lot of his refutations in his day, the fitan in which he faced with the Asha'ira, out of afraid that the people during this time would think they were from Ahl Sunnah, but they were not from them. So that's why he took a lot of time to devote himself towards exposing them for who they are, so the people wouldn't be confused that they're from Ahl Sunnah. And likewise, in these days, you'll find from the Aimma, likewise, you do the same thing, taking on that same methodology. <laughs> the methodology of those who come in the clothes of the guys of Ahl Sunnah, but yet, like we said, they're not from them. You'll notice that. Ahl Sunnah will take time in order to single these people out because they're, like we said, they're the most detrimental and the most dangerous ones out of fear that the people will be fooled or be guided by them. So those who can cause the most damage and the most harm and destroy us from within, as we know, that is a characteristic of who, everyone? The Munafiqeen. For those who come in the clothes and the cloak of us and look like us and try to destroy us within, you'll find that the Ahl Ilm that they say that these people have a resemblance with the people of Ifaq. As far as what they do to corrupt the people from within. Because we know, as Ahl Ilm that they mentioned, I think everyone knows this of those who have studied with Ahl Ilm, know that the outside enemy, or the inside enemy from amongst you, who looks like you, is more dangerous than what? Than the outside one, who makes itself distinct. For those who come in the disguise, that looks like you, they are the most dangerous upon you. And like you said, in that is a, is a similarity to the, to the Munafiqeen. And you'll find that's why we take a lot of time in order to make sure that the people are distinguished. Knowing who these people are, knowing their principles, knowing that the type of terminologies they use. Bringing it forth to the people to teach them that so they can know that even though they look like us and dress like us, and they wear clothes like us, they're not from us, when you start hearing certain types of speech. <clears throat> from one you'll find from in these days and times, <clears throat> from their speech, or from their patterns in these days, you'll find that all of their attacks is upon people who try to profess this methodology 
correctly, to the best of their ability, they attack them. You will never find any type of refutation against the Bukhalifin, those who are from, those who are truly destroying this land. Whether they be from the Ikhwan al muslimi or whether they be from the Asha'ira, or the Maturidiya, or whether they be from the Hadadiyin, you'll find that their concentration is always upon the people to, that ascribe to this blessed da'wah. Their attacks is on them constantly. If you used to go to their websites and ask them, where is your refutations against those who are truly dis destroying Islam? Where are they? Where is your refutations? They couldn't bring forth one or two. Rather, you'll find silence. Rather, all their attacks are against the people who ascribe to this blessed da'wah, or try to ascribe to this blessed da'wah, not ringing, raising a finger or a voice or a head at the people who are truly destroying Islam. That is from those characteristics that you have to be aware of to know that this person is coming under the guise of Ahl Sunnah in order to corrupt the people from within. That's from their traits. And you'll find, likewise, in their, their speech and in their, their conduct and their behavior, they find every excuse for those who are upon the ways that, the ways that contradict this blessed da'wah finding so much excuses for them. Oh, yeah, you gotta be patient, we gotta give them da'wah. You gotta give them da'wah, you know they're ignorant people, you can't tell them, say that they're ahd al you can't say that. But notice that their tongues are very sharp towards the people of the Sunnah. Every day, every night, working diligently, having videos on YouTube, even on the internet, they're now spreading and propagating their so-called reputations, using everything they can use in order to distort people's reputations, even if it's involving personal issues. And we'll talk about that at a later occasion. You'll never find from the ways of this blessed methodology that in order to refute someone that we break personal points. Oh, I came over your house, I bought you some shoes, and, and you didn't even give me salams. It sounds like a little child. He didn't even give me salams. Yeah, he leave all that off. As far as you'll find that there was the methodology from the past in critiquing someone correctly, they stuck to that which opposed the religion itself. Because the person in this da'wah, you have to realize that he doesn't care about himself as far as in regards to what will bring rectification. Even if he has to sacrifice himself to bring harmony to the da'wah, he doesn't. Even if you have to sacrifice yourself, because this Tao is bigger than all of us. And you'll find that the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, as we know the hadith clearly, ma kana yat, ma kana nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yantasibu li nafsir. But the Prophet sallallahu never used to take revenge for himself, ever, he never used to attain some type of aim or victory for himself, unless what everyone, the hurumatullah tabarakul ta'ala, that if he done to he kept, Unless the sanctuaries or the boundaries of Allah is transgressed, then he, alayhi salatu was salam, of course, what he were aim to give victory to was to, for Allah to give ta'ala to his religion, alayhi salatu was salam. That's what Ahl al based their criticism based upon, right? based upon that hadith. To know that criticism is only of that which opposes our religion and contradicts our religion. It's never about you and yourself and your personal feelings. That's why you'll find the critique and what they use in order to critique one, or they put themselves and their personal issues to the side and stick to the points of that which contradicted the religion. Always critiquing the person from the manahij of the aqai. Sticking to that. As far as that which is pertaining to sins, and pertaining to that which pertaining to the personal issues, oh yeah, I, he, I lost respect for him because he didn't fight so-and-so, he wanted to beat him up. Sound like a little child. Or so-and-so didn't grip me some shoes and my wife came over and he didn't, your wife didn't call my wife back. And all this, this is not from the methodology of the Southern from the times of old, nor the times of new. If everyone that I know that have read refutations from Sheikh al-Bani, from Sheikh Abdelaziz bin Baz, from Sheikh Ruthamin, do you find this type of speech inside of their refutations? I'm asking anyone. You would never find it.
So that would alleviate the majority of these the, the points that's being utilized against people. That would alleviate half of what they're using. Because nobody's trying to hear the personal issues. Grow up and be a man. Nobody wants to hear the personal issues and the sins. We want to hear what contradicted the religion. Because that's the most detrimental. Because that is the most vital. That the religion of Allah stay preserved. The religion of Allah to bring with the others stay preserved in all this aspect. And that a person makes that his focus. That is the most vital and the most important. To put yourself and your personal feelings to the side. So in that regard, like we said, that's from their, their, their patterns and their ways. You'll find that they're very soft with the people of Adbra, with the people of Tahazzu, who truly deserves the refutations and the critiquement and the nothing, the criticism and the disparagement, you'll find that they have no voice against them whatsoever. You will not find one refutation against the Sufiyin, Jama'at al tabligh They'll probably do that now after I said it because they listened to it. They'll probably write one now real quick, put it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went, I'm talking about beforehand, before I said it in the lecture. Where's your refutations against Jama'at al tabligh Where's your refutation against the Ikhwan al-Mujrimin? Where's your refutations against the Haddadiyin? Where are they? The people of, that's worshiping the graves, all these other things. We're asking, where are they? Where are they? Are the Sunnah busy in themselves? We're refuting these people where they put their refutations out, especially our brothers in Mecca to Saraviya, have numerous refutations against the people of Bidah. Numerous. But as for these other people that are now using the excuses and coming to these different massages and saying, oh, yeah, you know, these people, we have to, we have to make excuses for them. They're ignorant people. They're from the common folk. They're not Ahl al to the end of it. Making all these excuses to the end of it. Where's your refutations against the people who are truly now distorting the light of Islam and who are truly bringing darkness upon this blessed methodology? Where is your refutations? Where are they? I'm asking. Like I told you, after I sit in now, they're going to start probably writing to, to try to pull the wall over people's eyes real quick. But I'm talking about beforehand. Where are they? We've been asking for years. Since 2004, since the fitna of Medina.com. Since the fitna of Medina.com in 2004. Think about it, it goes a little bit before that. When we were there, all of us. Where was my our brother, my brother, my personal friend who died, Abu, Abu Umar Farooq, rahimahullah, and also my virtuous brother, Uwais of Tawil. We were all in the middle of that fitna, Medina.com. And you notice that Medina.com's fitna of who was part of the group was Tahir Wai. Tahir Wai was, was with Medina.com. I think if I'm not mistaken, he's probably still with them. Still, because he still attacks other pieces to this day. But he does it on a very, very sneaky, canavan way. You have to realize, since the, the, the 2004, 2003, Tahir Ayat was very quiet. He was, very, he was an organized fitna type person. He knew how to organize his fitna very well. What he would do is, he would get people around him, his, his soldiers, get them riled up. So they would be his voice. They would come out and talk while he sits in the background very quiet. There was a sitting one time, it was me, it was me, Waisa Tawil, Abu Umar Farooq, and there was other brothers. And at the sitting, was Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, and it was Sheikh Abdullah al Bukhari, and at that time, Khar al Haddadi. And Tahir Wyatt was in the back row, while all of his, his people were in the front, and he was in the back quiet. And he whispered to one of his people, he was like, like said, he's it's time to talk here, it's time to talk. So he sat back quiet again. Quiet. Generalizing. Now he that, that sitting, he just was, was quiet. Real, real quiet. And everybody's like, mm -hmm. That's what he does. Sit in the back quiet and he gets his rallies, his troops around him, and they vocalize for him. So they were doing all the talking while he was real quiet. In the back. Silent. And the same thing, that fit in the back of 2004, 2003, is the same thing he's doing now. Same exact thing in the back. As soon as he's about to come back to Philadelphia, he has his, his people around him to vocalize and attack the, 
the people that swindle here, we're trying to propagate the Tao here, sends them out, they vocalize, they stir up a lot of fitna while he's sitting in the back. Why? Either quiet or he generalizes. Don't say no names. Just, just put out there that the, the sickness, keep my mouth shut. Been doing that for years. Generalizing his speech, keeping it real general, so you can't never know exactly or pinpoint who he's talking about. Same thing fit that he was doing back in 2003. It has not changed. Still doing the same old nonsense. So Ahl Sunnah who went through these experiences, we're not fooled. We know what's going on. Been, we've known this stuff been going on for years. And he's still doing the same old nonsense. He's not bold enough or brave enough to say who he's talking about. He doesn't want to come out directly and say what scholar he's speaking about. I'm going to just keep it general. Which to let you know you're a coward. Just like those people who are saying we're cowards, why don't you tell your so-called sheikh to vocalize and specify who he's talking about. Tell him to be bold and brave. Who is he talking about? Stop generalizing. Who are you speaking about? Be a man. Don't generalize. You talk about it, just to say it. Who are you speaking about? We already kind of know who's coming, who you're talking about. But like I said, if a person's not bold enough to say it, then you shouldn't even take no heed to it. Just keep it moving. Don't waste your time. Don't get affected. You know, you know starting up some fit time and just going to different people. Yeah, man, you heard what he said on YouTube. Ah, hey, I'm not trying to hear it. The man ain't trying to be mad enough to say who he's talking about. Keep it moving. And that's in any Islam. If you're not trying to name your man, I'm not trying to hear it. You know, it was said to me that you said such and such. Yeah, if you name your man, you're Islam. Or I'm not trying to hear it. Keep it moving. Be bold, be brave to say your man and your isnad. Say who said the name. Give me the names or us. I'm not trying to hear it. It's too much time. I'm 40 years old. We're about to get to the grave soon. I'm trying to prepare myself for meeting the law. If you're going to be a man, be a man. Tell your name. Say your man or us. I'm not trying to hear it. Time's ticking. So what I'm saying is, these are the little type of characteristics you'll find of these people. Number one is, like I said, you'll never find their reputation against the people who are truly destroying this land. You won't find it. The reputations are now that they're supposed to be out on the internet, who they're supposed to put their focus on. Because these are the people who are truly destroying this land. You have to realize that methodology is what's being propagated now in front of your eyes. This is what's going on. Like I said, these people who now are stirring up all this chaos and this fit that, where is your reputation against the Jamaica to believe? Where is your reputation to get? Rather, you will find that the people of, of us now are praising them to do what they're doing. They're praising them. MashaAllah, you're coming at those madkhadis real good. Yeah. So who are you truly in reality aiding? You're aiding them because they're praising you for it. They're praising you for it now. So who are you aiding the truth in reality? That's what I'm saying. So that's one sign you see. A sign that you'll never find any reputation against those who are truly destroying this land. You'll never find it. That's been going on since 2003. This has been a methodology from the time, starting with the Quran, all the way to now. Ya Mashai, oh ya Ma'ash al Has not changed. Ahl al-Bira, who are destroying Islam, are trying to destroy Islam back then, the ulama put refutations out against them. Likewise, the methodology has not changed. Rather, we are more in need of refuting Ahl al-Bira more than these days back probably before then. Due to the fact that the, the multiple, the, or the vast majority of now the Muslim world, you'll find is in regards to that which is another methodology or another aqidah. That's in contrast with the Sahaba were buying. And here we are now, you'll find that they say now, there is no Ahl Bidr, Ahl Bidr, they don't even exist, you know, they're all ignorant. If you, if you was to apply that all over the dunya, what would you think would be the result of it? What would be the corruption and the confusion that would be going on in the different masajid? Where Ahl Sunnah would be in the same ranks with, Ahl, with the people from the Ikhwaniyyin, and the Sajamat al and everybody's mixed together. What do you think would be the result of this? 
applying this all around the dunya with no distinction. So what we're saying in regards to this, that the refutation of this methodology started with the Qur'an itself. This refutation starts with the, with the validation of Islam. With validation of Islam, is a refutation in it. A lot of people don't realize this. As I've taught brothers, and I'm sure our brothers have, have taught this to all, or cultivated our brothers upon this, which is, La ilaha illallah. When you utter the mere shahada, what it has in it and contains in it is a refutation. When you say, La ilaha, there's no deity where they worship. Who's that a refutation against? You guys are not answering this? Are you serious? None has the right to be worshipped. Who's that a reputation against? What you said? The Mushrik said. The polytheists. It's a reputation against the polytheists. In the law. It's a reputation against who? I said. Reputation against the atheists. What validation is Islam in it is a reputation. Just the mere shahada has a reputation in it. And you have to believe that because that would validate is Islam. You say la ilaha, you're, you're setting yourself free from who? For the, for the polytheists. I've separated myself from them. I'm not free from them. I'm not believing what they believe. It's a reputation against them. It's the mushikin. Illallah. It's a reputation against who? It's the malahida. It's the atheists. So in the mere shahada is a reputation. Just the shahada itself. The Qur'an is filled with refutations against Ba'afid, against Ba'afid and his people. And Allah Ta'ala had named them on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam named who they are, specified who they are. The people of Ahl Kitab were the Yahud and Nasar, they were named. What I wanted to speak about today is in regards to how people now, the new so-called wave and the nonsense that's being spread amongst the communities, is that's all you people busy yourselves with, the Kitab al-Tawheed, uh, uh, these books, that's all you busy, that's all you have, that's all you busy yourselves with, that's all you guys do, that's it. Is there anything else you have? A lot of people don't realize, <clears throat> as I've spoken to the brothers before, the first thing on the day of resurrection that comes forth is going to be based upon this. And rather, the first thing that's going to manifest itself when you're put under the dirt is this. The reason why Usul of Haratha was made is in order to answer the what? The question is where everyone? In the grave. In order to answer the questions of the grave. So the source, once you put under that dirt, that which you learned in that book now is going to be actualized. If you did not actualize it in your whole life, throughout your actions, of course. But what you were taught in that, that's now going to play out itself once you put under that dirt. The question number one is going to come forth just like on the day of resurrection. You're going to find some resemblance in, in sequence just like this. As soon as you come in the grave, as soon as everyone walks away, so it's now it's just you and Allah. Now no one can avail you. Not your children, not your strength, not your weights, not what you put forth for push-ups and pull-ups. Your wife, your children, your money, your car, it's just you and Allah now. And your deeds. That's it. It's you and Allah and your good and your bad actions now. So once you put under that dirt, <clears throat> what's the first question that's gonna be asked? Who's your Lord? What what is that? What category of Tawheed is that everyone? Tawheed of Ubuya. The person, of course, is going to say who? It'll be Allah. Allah's, what category of Tawheed is that? Tawheed al-Ibadah. 
The word love of Jalala Allah, which is ma'lub, is a ma'bud. Which is what, everyone? Tuhid wa uluhiyya. So the first thing that's going to come into place once you put it in the grave is concerning what? Tawheed al and Tawheed wa So all the nonsense about, you know, social ills and all these other things, yeah, at the end of the day, what's the person that's put under that dirt? None of that even matters anymore. What's now, is the, what's, what's important and vital now is what he learned and implemented in those books. Because other than that, he's going to be what? Destroyed. And as we know that the angels are going to come in the grave, and they're going to interrogate you. As we know, the interrogation of some people, as we know in this dunya, they get intimidated by the cops or the authorities, an intimidation that is very, very frightful. Some of us are frightful by the creation, but you'll find that they go to the, the cop station, they, they receive their interrogation. And he gets shook up until they start singing like a bird, right? Funny. What about the interrogation of the angels? And we know that the interrogation is going to take place, and that's in confirmation of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep those who believe with a qawl al-thabit, with a firm statement in this dunya and in the hereafter. You'll find from the tafsir of that, is that in order for one to answer the questions in the grave, it has to be tawfiq from Allah to keep him firm. It's not just going to be as simple and easy as one would say, oh, my Lord is Allah, my Prophet, my prophet is Muhammad, and man nabiyuk, wa rabbuk, wa man nabiyuk, and what's your deen? It's just easy and simple like that. Rather you will find your mashallah, if what is very vital is that, that this has to be tawfiq that Allah gives you to keep you firm. It has to come from Allah. Because the interrogation of the angels is going to be a very scareful and frightful interrogation. And to the point, like we said, it has to be tawfiq from Allah that Allah keep you firm when those questions are, are being addressed, or when those questions are being asked, it has to be tawfiq from Allah that He keeps you firm. And notice that that tawfiq or that firmness that you be given is based upon how you implemented that in this dunya. As far as you working diligently to to purify your creed and your belief and your conviction. Put forth your utmost effort in purifying that while you're in this dunya. And likewise, what you actualize and what you bore, the fruits of it, which was your righteous actions. That's the only way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you tawfiq to answer those questions. Because it's not going to be simple as a lot of people think. It's going to be interrogation. So frightful to the point, like we said, the only way that one will be able to pass those questions has to be tawfiq from Allah. But he keep you firm. So on the day when one is put under the dirt, what's going to be actualized, number one, is pertaining to tawheed al rububi wal uluhiyya. Likewise on the day of resurrection, when everyone is raised up, when everyone is raised, is it going to be asked, of course, is it going to be asked directly about the people's sins? Is it going to be talked about the people's sins? And we're not legalizing sin. We're talking about what's going to be take place in order as the ahadith say in the sunnah. So here, what we're saying here in the beginning, what's going to take place, number one, on the day of resurrection, when everyone is gathered, and everyone is naked and uncircumcised on the day of resurrection. See, all of not, all the stuff that goes on now with us is, is, is now going to be put in perspective in the hereafter. None of, none of this stuff is going to matter. All of us about our muscles and our sneakers and all the stuff we, we brag about, and all the stuff that we take, we take blessing in, and all these other things now is, is going to be irrelevant now. It's all about our good deeds and our righteousness. And number one, at the head of it, before that, is our i'tiqad. Number one, what's going to be addressed on the day of resurrection, as soon as you're raised, is about your belief system. It starts off with the i'tiqad. Yes, on the day of resurrection, it's not going to start off with the sins. It's not going to start off with the sins first. That's going to come, don't worry. What's going to start off with is the i'tiqad. It's going to start off with the belief system. Whether or not you preserve that. 
and you kept that sound and you kept it from it being tainted, it corrupted. What I mean by that, you'll find in the ahadith, and I want everyone to listen attentively to this. Okay. As he comes in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, you'll find in the first part of the hadith it says this. And I want everyone to listen carefully to this. It says, يَجْمَعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فِي يُنَادِ مُنَادٍ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَلَمْ تَرْضَى مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَالَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَصَوَّرَكُمْ وَرَزَقَكُمْ أَنْ يُوَالِيَ كُلُّ إِنْسَانِ مَا كَانَ يَعْبُدْ فِي الدنيا وَيَتَوَلَّى أَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ عَدْلٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى قال فيمتلك كل إنسان منكم إلى ما كان يتولى في الدنيا ويمثل لهم ما كان ما كانوا يعبدون في الدنيا وقال يمثل لمن كان يعبد عيسى شيطان عيسى في الآن ده حبيبي ثم ربط الناس بعض فرس عبد الله عبد الله بن مسعود بن ابن أم عبد عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه when he said in this day of he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would gather the people on the day of resurrection. I want everyone to listen to this part. A caller will call out, O oh people, are you not pleased from your Lord, Mirrabbikum, the one who created you, the one who gave you shape, the one who provided for you, that everyone take his awali or go, go, that every person go towards and when he used to claim as worship in this dunya, let him go to it. So when the day of resurrection starts off and it commences, listen to what it says. You know, call him a call out. Isn't it not pleased from your Lord, the one who created you, the one who gave you shape, the one who provided for you? Which category of Tawheed is that, everyone? Tawheed al Isn't that justice from your Lord? They say yes, of course. Let every person from amongst you, let him go towards, and let him follow what he used to worship in this dunya. What category of Tawheed is that, everyone? Tawheed al So Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, all, all these things that people use now, the new wave of those who claiming to come under the guise of Salafiyyah, that's all you people have, to Kitab al-Tawheed, Kitab al-Sunnah, the I'tiqad. The reason why you knuckleheads are confused about this methodology is because you have not read the books and understood them properly, such as the books of the I'tiqad. That's the reason why you're sitting with a, girl, a woman and having dialogue with her. That's the reason why you're having a TV show. And you'll never find the a'imma from the past. Not Sheikh al-Albani. Have you ever seen Sheikh al-Albani have a dialogue with a woman on a TV show? I'm just asking. Have you ever seen Sheikh Abdelaziz and Baz have a dialogue with a woman on a TV show? Have you ever seen Sheikh Muqbil? Have you ever seen Imam Muqbil have a dialogue with a TV show with a woman? I'm just asking. I'm just, I'm just asking. These are a'imma that Allah has raised their dhikr all over the dunya. Did they leave a TV show to make dialogue with a woman in order for a dick to be raised? Ali Imam Shakri Thani, has he ever had a dialogue with a TV show with a woman and they have a dialogue with her on a TV show? Oh, and also likewise, having uh, having posters with your picture in it, holding it like you're, like you're a singer, like this, with other women on it, on the picture, with other women. Have you ever seen any of the uh, Imma do stuff like this? Any of them? I'm asking. Never see one. So now these books that you so-called say that you criticize us, this is all we have, this is the first thing that's going to take place on the day of resurrection. And if this is the first thing that's going to take place on the day of resurrection, don't you think that needs to be our main focus and preparation for when we're raised up on the day of resurrection? I'm asking. I'm just asking. This is the first thing that's going to be addressed. The sins come later. Oh, the sins will be addressed. The sins about the foul, now, not nasty things that people did in this dunya 
with the homosexuality and the fornication, the zina, all that's going to come, don't worry. But the first thing was worse than that, worse, is, and am, I, am I now legalizing sin by saying, what's worse than that, I'm asking? Am I legalizing sin now? What's worse than that is your answer card is affected. Because the first thing that's going to be addressed is this. The sins is not going to be invalid unless your answer card is straight, your belief is straight. If that's invalid, look what's going to happen on the day of resurrection. The prophet said so another narration of that which is the, on the authority of. We're going to bring another narration. The tremendous hadith Abu Sa'id al Khudri, Sa'id ibn Malik ibn Sinan. That hadith where it says, the tatba' kullu ummatin la kanat ta'bud. Let every nation follow what he used to worship in this dunya. Until it be brought the, the moon, the sun, the sticks, the rocks, everything. Buddha, you name it. All of them will be what? Brought forth. All of them are going to fall where, as it says in the narration, into hell. That's when it's what? Then the people of the book likewise will come after that. But those who use polytheists, and those who are upon idol tree won't be even given a chance. Because the most pathetic sin that they committed was what? Shirk with Allah to bring with Allah. So that pertaining to sins and good deeds is went out the door. You committed the most ultimate oppression, which is polytheism. So now that starts off first. Once that starts, then the people of the book will come. Then it says in the narration, as it says right here, I'm just going based upon the narration, what it says in this order. And so when people of the book are not left, and then there's going to be brought forth those who used to follow Jesus, then there will be brought forth an image of Isa, of Jesus the son of Mary, but however it's a shaitan, as it says in the narration. When shaitan, in this image of Jesus the son of Mary, Mary they will follow him until likewise they will fall into the hellfire. And likewise, pertaining to the Jews, likewise. For those who used to work at Uzair, it will be brought forth a shaitan in the form of the Uzair. Until they will fall into the hellfire. So what will happen? Those who did not rectify their creed, and those who died in the state of kufr, the state of disbelief, what will happen to them, Yama Shal Ikhwa? They're going to go to the hellfire first. So all of that about social ills of which Ahlul Sunnah does work on. Despite of what people think, in contrast, we work and focus on the books of Tawheed. We focus on the books of. And I'm sure a lot of these people have not read, they're going to the books of the ulama, from those who learned the method, for the method of the men, have the men have properly. So the Sheikh Rabir and all of them who they claim they say, oh, there's other scholars, that's the, that's the other line you have to watch out for. Is the Sheikh Rabir is not the only scholar so you can go to. And what can he say with a smile? The Sheikh Rabir is not the only scholar you go to. There's other scholars. That's the other trick they use. It's not the scholars you could go to. Eh? And just like our brother Abu Iyab, he says that's the new line. That's the lines, the like the sequence lines they use because they know at the end, they know they have hatred for the shit. But they try to profess in front of you, like they got so much love for him. Yeah, I, yeah, Sheikh will be a guy of the book. You know, some of the scholars in there, but you know, I love the Sheikh anyway. But there's other scholars there you could go to. But you know, I love the Sheikh. I love the Sheikh. Yeah, right. I the son that knows you. It's all nonsense. Nobody's fooled. So you'll find in these different types of refutations, or you'll find it, in, excuse me, it pertains to this hadith here. It says in regards to on the day of resurrection, that those who did not rectify their irtiqai, they will die in the state where they'll fall in the hellfire. Until no one is left except of those who, of course, that are scribes to other slab, whether it be barun or fajr. And the munafiqeen, and some of the narrations will bring, inshallah. The hypocrites, and those who are righteous, and those who are what? Those who are who are fujah, who those who are sinners. They are also likewise going to be one only ones that's left. Why? Because of course we know the Munafiqeen outwardly they profess Islam, but they didn't rectify it inwardly. But in regards to those who did not rectify the Atiqad first, one might ask the question: What about the third category of Tawheed? You said that Tawheed al 
with Tawheed al what about the third category? Listen to this narration, as it goes on in the same one. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who have studied Aqeedah and Tawheed, know that Allah will show Himself how many times in the hereafter? Is it five, two, three, four? How many? The name. What's the first one? It said two, which is correct. Huh? First one. On the Arasat of Qiyamah, on the plains of the day of resurrection and in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come on the day of resurrection. As we know, on the day of resurrection, there will be numerous trials. Numerous trials. And the test starts off with this, pertaining to Tawheed al Rububi al Uluhiyah. The first test starts off with that. Then the third category of Tawheed is going to be put to test. Well, Allah to bring with the, as it says in the narration, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come in the form of what a person thinks of what he looked. In his mind, he will come to him in that way. And he will say, I am your Lord. Huh. He will say, I am your Lord. Those who from Ahlul Sunnah and the Salafiyyin who study Tawheed and Asma wa Sifat, who studied it, and took time out to analyze it perfectly, know the head of what we know, which is the eye, which is what everyone, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَسْمِعُ بَصِيرٌ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Nothing is similar to him, and he is سَمِعُ بَصِيرٌ well, People who study that properly, such as the books of Aqib Tawasitiyah, such as Al-Ta'ib Al-Muthra, all those other different books, no, this is going to be put to practice on the day of resurrection. It's going to be actualized now. When Allah tests the people with this, once the people study Aqidah in this dunya, now it's going to be tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, I'm your Lord. It's going to come to them in the, and that which they thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in the closest shape of what they thought. Ahlul Sunnah was Salafi'in know that nothing is similar to Allah. That's the reason why it says in the narration they will say, Na'udhu billahi mink, la nushiku billahi shayha. We seek refuge in Allah from you. He says, we don't set our partners with Allah, our Lord at least. Based upon the ayah, they commit lihi shape. Because we know that everything in the mind of the human being is what everyone created. It's a test. So it says in the narration that Allah says that some of the people, yakarian qalib, that some of them are going to fail the test. Yakarian qalib. Allah is going to say it three times. I am your Lord. This is going to come to them in the course of what they follow is Allah. They're going to keep those who are Ahlul Sunnah Salafi'in who study Aqeedah and Tawheed and Rububi and Ulahi and Rasmah Sifat and study it properly and analyze it and do it. Now it's going to what? Be tested. When it comes to the day of resurrection, they're going to say, La'udhu billahi mak, la nushriku billahi shayya. Which category of Tawheed is that? Tawheed and Rasmah Sifat. This doesn't stop there at the third category of Tawheed. Then Allah is going to call out to the people and say to them, He's going to say to them, Do you know a sign that if you knew, if you seen it, that you would know this, your Lord? Huh. What is it going to say in the narration? He says, فَيَكْشِفْ Allah as sak Allah is going to expose the shin. What category of Tawheed is that, everyone? Tawheed and Asma wa Sifat. Allah is going to reveal the shin. The shin is going to be revealed. To the point that we know once the shin is revealed, that the believers will what? Prostrate. The Munafi Peen will try, but it will become like we know. Kasiyasi and Baqar. It was going to say in another narration, Yatibqatin Wahida. It's going to be like one board. They won't be able to prostrate until they will be exposed, truly for who they are. So we find in these narrations that what everyone, all three categories of Tawheed is going to be what? Put to practice on the day of resurrection. All three. 
that which is pertaining to the tabat of the sunnah, they're those who are being firm upon this creed and this aqidah. We know likewise that's what also likewise that's going to be actualized on the day of resurrection in regards to those who will be swept away from the home whether they be from the people of Ridda or the people who went astray or the ones who apostated or in regards to those deviant sects who Allah to go through the Prophet Islam informed that they went into the hellfire from the deviant sects who went astray who still are in the fold of Islam even though they deviated in some aspect of creed or in the usul of Ahl Sunnah. We know that they were going to enter the hellfire until they are purified of the bid'ah or the that which they had innovated or they went astray in and they will have to be purified of it. If they are from those different sects who are still in the fold of Islam, you'll find the Sheikh Muhammad al Jabi that he mentions it says, as we know that bid'ah Bid'ah is a type of fisk. It is. It's a type of fisk. It is a type of fisk, and if you die upon it, you can enter the hellfire as a result of it. That's because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about all those sects from his ummah, all of them will enter the hellfire, which is how many? Seventy-three sects, all of them are hell except one. Those who have their portion are still in the fold of Islam. Because we won't make takfir of those who have deviated in certain aspects of it, of course. We don't make takfir on them. Those who die in that state, from those who went astray in some aspects of the usul of Ahl Sunnah, it's a type of fist that they, they will die in, they will be in the hellfire. From those deviant sects, they will have to be purified from it until they are brought out. If their bid'ah was mukaffirah, they will remove them from the fold of Islam, then that's something different. But in regards to, like we said generally, that those from Ahl Bidah that die in that state, then it is a type of fist that a person, that if he dies in that state, he will be in hell. The person has to be very what? Cautious in these days, cautious in these days and times. So you will find that all three. Oh, geez, what's, what's wrong with you? Stop. I think it was 6.35. So those who condemn us and, and try to use and say, like for example, that this other nonsense that I heard in December, and I laugh when I heard it, that you know the books of Usul and after they're not hadithi, they don't have enough hadith in it. <laughs> All these different things that you'll find, and you just laugh when you hear it. It's just like, wow. This is the type of people that's given down now. These are the people who's given down. The people are truly following them in that. Surah Salatha is not hadithy enough. Does not have enough ahadith? Have anyone, have any from the a'imah, you always have to ask a person, has someone preceded you in that statement, especially from the a'imah these days and times? Ask, did Shaykh al Bani ever criticize? And he was the muhaddath of this whole asr. Has he ever said that usul of salat is not, is, not a, not, not, is not enough hadith in it? Have you ever heard Shaykh al Bani said that? Have you ever heard Shaykh al Imam al Baz who probably taught usul of salat more than, who they said about maybe 10 times or more? Probably more than that. Say about this book that it's not hadithy enough. It's not enough hadith in it. Have you ever seen him say, even though he taught the book numerous, numerous times? I'm sure that if it was something that was a discrepancy in the book, he would have said it. He, I'm sure he probably wouldn't have taught it either. Also, likewise, from these numerous a'imma who say these type of things, who are now, these different callers. You'll find also, have you know that Shaykh Muhammad al-Salih al-Uthami have even said they criticized this with Rishul Fulq Thalatha to Usul? It's not hadithi, it's not enough hadith in it. Have you ever, <laughs> have you heard this nonsense? You just, it's just loud, you just, you, you just really shake your head at certain things now. You just be like, wow, it's just every knucklehead just quote a little Arabic 
And everyone now can just, he can have a flock of people flocking to him. Quotes a little Arabic, learns a little Arabic. Here he comes. People now, from, especially for Philadelphia, you should know better by now. We should know better here in the city. These people come with this nonsense, you just be like, well, what are you talking about? What are you you just look at it with a foot. It's just like, what? to usul yahi, rectify nations. Rectify nations. These books rectify nations. None of the a'imma from the time, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, had authored this book up to now. No one has criticized it. All those who have the correct aqid and the correct creed all praised it. Whether it be from Sheikh Muhammad, you name all the ulama of Nijd. All of them. You can name it. He had a lot of relatives and a lot of people of his family. All of them praised it. All the ulama of Nijd. All the ulama of these days and times. I have never heard none of them say out of one of their mouths that the, the book of Usul al is not hadithi enough. So what I'm saying, brother, especially in this city, when this nonsense come, don't even waste your time. Especially now who come under the guise of now the, the new principles of Abu al-Hassan al-Ma'ibi are being what? Are now being brought to life here. Again. The new print or the principles of Al-Hassan Madibi Ali Halabi is just another replay. From those who lived in the 90s and those of now, know that this is just a rerun. As soon as I heard three or four statements from certain people that I was listening to, I said, Abu Hassan Madibi. Right. It's enough for me. I ain't even gotta hear it no more. As soon as I heard it, somebody played me the recorder, I listened to it. Couple of statements, Abu Hassan Madibi. Back. Definitely ain't even gotta hear the rest. I ain't gotta listen to two hours. About sins and people talking about and all the other nonsense. I ain't gotta hear about that. Who people bring in on to bring in personal issues, you bring in other people to fight your battle for you, talking nonsense about sins and all the other nonsense. I ain't even gotta hear all that. As soon as you heard three things, I heard three statements, I'm gonna have some magic. Then you find all the attacks upon what? Other some the people trying to scrap this down. Where's your reputation against your mind to believe? As soon as you see the pattern, I'm gonna have some be again. Brought back to life. Now here in America. And then they said now the, the new statement, Abu Hassan Madibi's books is not even translated. His books is not here, Sheikh. His fitness is not here. That's because you're upon it. That's because you're implementing it. You're, you're, you're promoting it. Because your wars with the people of Sunday in Philadelphia. Because we're asking you. Where's your reputation against the Ikhwanis? Where is it? We're asking. Where is it? Give it to us. Where's your reputation against the Asha'ala? Where's your reputation against the grave worshippers? Where's your reputation against the Hurabu? The Haddadis? You name it. Bring it. We want it. Everybody's still waiting. We've been waiting for years with Tanya. We still have one day put one out. We've been waiting over a decade now. Rather, you'll find that he went to and give them, give them talk with them until even Farrakhan praised them. He said, thank you for that which is of the light of the spirit of unity with us. That's what Farrakhan even said out of his own mouth. You didn't make no distinction between Haq and Batu when you gave that lecture. You generalized just like you generalized in that stupid clip you put out last month. Because you ain't say no names on that clip. You always generalize them. What did Ibn al say in the near about General Laza? What did he say? What did he say? Everybody knows the poetry. عَلَيْكَ بِالْتَفْصِيلِ وَالْبَيَانِ فَلْ الْإِطْلَاقِ وَالْإِجْمَالِ بِالْدُونِ بَيَانِ قَدْ أَفْسَدَ الْوُجُودِ وَحَبِطَ أَنْ الْأَرَابِ الْأَذْهَابِ فِي كُلِّ زَمَانِ He says you have to give details and clarification. When you speak, your speech always aims the truth. It can never be muhtamil. Ahlul Sunnah, there's a methodology that is known. If I have the book, I will read, read, read exactly Shaykh al He says, a Sunni Salafi never generalizes where his speech could be utilized by the people of the truth or the people of falsehood. That's a methodology that's known. He says, when the Prophet Sunni used to speak, when the Sahabi used to speak, they always uttered, web, uttered words that will always aid the truth. Always. Making it clear and distinct. Never generalize it. Where your truth, where your speech can be 
be muhtamil. It can necessitate this or it can necessitate that. He said in the poetry, you have to give details and you have to make your speech clear. He said for very generalization and just itlaq, just leave your speech open. Has corrupted this existence and has destroyed the opinions and the minds in every time. That's a nuniyah. Likewise with the, with the person up in Muhammadiyah, up in New York. Generalized again. These people, they always talking about how we're not brave. You tell those idiots to be men and say who you're talking about. Because they stay generalizing. Know that this speech in this scholar doesn't like, he doesn't like, care about you. Say who you're talking about, Mr. Brave Man. Don't generalize. What scholar doesn't care about us and our people? Who? That's what I'm saying here in Philadelphia. When people quote this nonsense, if you know that he's not bold enough to say the name, don't even waste your time. None of this scholar doesn't care about you or your people. Doesn't, he drinks his coffee and his dates. He doesn't miss it in the morning time. Worrying about the... And he tries to use something something of, our, of what goes on with the communities and societies here. From the one-parent homes and the people who are drugs. Just to make his speech be acceptable. Use the last part to code it up. But I'm asking right now, what style are you talking about? You're generalizing again. Okay, so I, I have a I, those are people who... Now y'all claim y'all so-called brave and bold, give a doubt. Okay, give your names. Who you talking about? Tahir Wai generalized. They got Muhammad here generalized. All these generalizations, if you're not going to say who you're talking about, I'm not wasting my time. The coward. <laughs> say who you're talking about. But you know they know. Once they say some names, they finish. Because we know who you're talking about. We just waiting for you to say it. See, those who are waiting, we're waiting just for you to say it. When he says it, it was, it was more than likely in their circles behind closed doors. Of course, you know they very frank. Yeah, yeah, she could be it. Yeah, she my mom, dad, yes, all you got, she could be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like little, little, little punks behind the ground, behind the, the walls. She could be it. She could be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you still feel good. All the now. But when you're in front of the people, yeah, 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 Ahi, you know, you know. Uh, you know, that's not all the ulama that's out there. You know, those are the scholars you can benefit from, even though I love them anyway. Come on now. You understand, everyone? So like I said, all the, 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 the nonsense about sins and all these other things they try to bring on their shoulders and all this to try to talk about the grades of people and the, the grades and or the sins of people and all these other things, always have to look at the scholastic-based criticism of the people of the past and of today and compare it to their speech. How do they criticize? I don't want to hear feelings about this person committed this sin. I don't want to hear that. You go to Sheikh Rabir right now. None of them are going to ask about, listen, Nahi, as far as sins, I want to what goes against the religion. That's more important. These sins to the side. What did they oppose in the religion? Nobody else is trying to hear the sins. About what fight took place, or my, 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 my family used to visit your family, your wife didn't call my wife back, and all that other nonsense. Listen, I think that's for little, little boys. We want to know what did they do as far as the religion. So you'll notice that in the refutation of Ali Davis, majority of the nonsense that he bought on the refutation, because I didn't have time to, I was going to refute it because the just was real busy, because I seen it and I laughed at it, because the majority of our personal points, they are personal issues. Majority of the personal issues, like, this is a person's issues. This, he's using, using this in a reputation? Are you serious? No, I am Hadith. No, I am Hadith and a bunch of personal issues. Or a bunch of personal issues, right? Majority of personal. So that's what I'm saying. You should take the personal issue. The majority of reputation is nullified. If not all of it. So those who understood, understand the methodology of, of Sadaviyya, who truly are, are deep rooted in this, in this, in this, in this, in this, in this, inshallah, Know that that reputation was baseless because you brought a bunch of what? Personal issues. With no hadith and no ayah. <laughs> With no hadith and no ayah. So that's what I'm saying, brothers. These people, such as Ali Davis and all them other knuckleheads, these people have not read the books of Iqbal al-Kubra, Ibn al-Baqtah. 
Yes, I went through it from the likes of Sheikh Ubayy, Sheikh Muhammad Ali, Al Ibn Al Kubra, or Al Sughra, the Bni Baqa, that teaches you the methodology of, of, of Salafia. He truly teaches you the books of, of Salafia, how the principles that if the people was to study it, they would know that these waves that come upon our cities, they wouldn't even they, they, they wouldn't even be shook enough. Such as the books of the Ibn Al Kubra, Al Sughra, Al Bni Baqa, Sheikh Al Sughra, Atiqal Ahl Sun, Bala Al Kai. This teaches you the methodology of the books of Sharia by Al Jurri, like we said, Shafu Sul Atiqad, Ahl Sul Bala Lakai. Those books teach you the minhaj. So when these people come with these type of, this type of different decorated speech and embellished speech, you won't get confused. All you gotta hear is about two, three sentences. That's it. That's all I gotta hear. I know exactly what he's on. I ain't even gotta hear the rest. I'm not going to busy myself. I got too much, too much stuff to do. I got stuff to do with my child, my children. Just stuff to do with my kids. Stuff to do with teaching the people, spreading the doubt. I ain't got time to listen to two hours on YouTube with a bunch of nonsense and rhetoric. Typically, I don't have the time. All I heard, alhamdulillah, I heard two, three sentences. I said, that is the statement of the Hassan and let me be exactly. And I be happy. That's all I needed to hear. Person that studies men had just and hears those three statements, that's all he needs to know. It's enough for me. And that's where even you'll find the likes of the Ulama because they have too much stuff to do. They have a lot of stuff on their plate. So as they hear two or three statements, bang, I already know these ones. I gotta hear three hours of the rest of this nonsense. I gotta even hear it. I'm not wasting my time. It's too much stuff that gotta be done. We 40, 50 years old, a lot of his hair is getting gray, we're losing our hair. It's, it's no time. People got wives to take care of, stuff to do. No, but I'm not wasting my time two hours with some stupid some idiots. I'm not, I'm not wasting my time. As soon as I heard those three points, Abu Hassan Mani bin Ali Hassan Hanabi. From my brothers such as Abu Iyab, Abu Khadija, everybody that knows this, they said this is the same fit from the past. It's the same thing. We ain't gotta, it's just re regurgitating the same old nonsense. It's just a replay. That's all it is. So that's what we want our brothers to now stay firm upon this new wave. People want to say, you know, we're tired of these waves. The waves are going to keep coming. There's nothing going to. There's nothing going to stop the wave of Fitan. Fitan is going to keep coming. It's not going to stop. The Prophet ﷺ made that clear. When he said, "Ani salatu salamu tu sahihi Muslim, fataji ul fitna, fi yuraqiku ba'ta ha ba'ta, fi yqul al mu'min hadhi muhlika hadhi muhlika ti, thumma takajid, thumma taji ul fitna, fi yuraqiku ba'ta ha ba'ta, faqala hadhi hadhi, faman arada an yuzah zah al nar." وأدخل الجنة فالتأتيه منيته وهو يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر وليأتي إلى الناس ما يحب ويبتلي إذا فتنة is going to come فيرقق بعضها بعضا the fitna that is going to come that fitna that came is going to be a lot more, more confusing a lot more worse a lot more inconspicuous than the one that preceded it you understand everyone? Then the Prophet said, then it's going to what? Be released. Until what? The Mu'min will say, this is my destruction right here. Then another fitna is going to wave, another wave is going to come. Then he's going to say, this is my destruction. This one, this one. Notice the Prophet said, the one that came is going to be more confusing than the one that what? Part. That, 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 part, that left away without which preceded it. Waves are going to come. The only way you can, you can show a person with their true colors is that fitna comes. That's why Sheikh Muhammad Allah, remember he used to say his poetry in a lot of his lessons, he used to say, Jazallahu shada'id kulla khayr, a'raftu biha sadiqi man adubi. May Allah reward trials and tribulations. He says, I know by it, my friend from my enemy. I know by it, my friend from my enemy. Fitna exposes people for who they are. Their true colors are how they are as a person. That's why this, the wave is going to continue. The only way you stay firm is learning your usul and studying the books of the Ibani, such as Ibn Baqa, Shah Usul Al-Itiqad al Lakali, studying the books of Sharia al Ajurni. Those books are very, very vital and important these days, and especially the books of refutations by those ulama. Read the books of the Alf. 
when Sheikh Abiyah had, oh, excuse me, no, when Sheikh Abiyah had refuted uh, Abdul Hassan al Madibi. If I had time, if I had time with what I want to do, I would read all those different series that Sheikh Abiyah had read against Abdul Hassan al Madibi. That was Abdul Hassan al Madibi. Wallahi, brothers, if you had time, and you, especially if you, you know the Arabic language, read all those series that he, he wrote and refuted Abdul Hassan al Madibi. Those refutations will give you deep root to the Salafiyyah as, as, as it should be in your blood. Read Sheikh Ahmed Najmi's refutation against Ali Halabi. Read those refutations. Those refut refutations are very vital to your Salafiyyah. And you keeping it clear and firm and not being polluted by this outside ways and turrets of fitan that's going on. Once you read those books, it'll become clear. As soon as the person say one or two or three statements, that's all you got to listen to, I know what you want. I don't got to hear two or three hours, four hours of sitting on YouTube wasting my time. I already know. As soon as I heard a couple of statements that came out your mouth. Is it clear, everyone? Like I said, this stuff is embarrassing that this city, we, how long we've been trying to propagate Salafi in this city. Some of the stuff that's going on, it's embarrassing that anybody can just come in the city and cause so much confusion. This stuff is embarrassing. How some outside knuckleheads that study probably for a couple of months can really come up and shake up the shake up people. So inshallah we'll, we'll try to continue for next uh for tomorrow. I don't know if we scheduled for next uh, for tomorrow or not. I'm not sure. My brother Cash was just arrived. Hmm. Ain't come up yet today. But brothers, like I said, don't be Fooled by the hype, the certain people are coming back now. So everybody's so-called getting hype or whatever, and the, the, the so-called hype. When this person has not done nothing for this dow here, except cause more and more confusion. Calling the politics, involving the Muslims in politics, coming with a wave and saying that the ulama are different in the aspect of voting. It's a shame that even the Kufar know it's a, it's a big hoax. They even know it. So why would you even call the Muslims to be involved in it now? Even the Kufar themselves say it's a hoax. They know who's going to be in that office five years before the even elections even start. They know who's going to be in that chair. You really think they're going to depend on some some common folk from the ghetto to put to from the from uh, from the ghetto to really put their vote in, and that vote really is going to have some effect to who they're going to put in that office chair? Are you serious? That even to the point where even when they watch this so-called debate. You don't even understand any of the terms they use it in the first place. You're like, what is he talking about? So what are you basing your vote upon? You don't even understand the terms they use it. What is it on? Is this going to be on some tausul or asubi? Is this going to be on some fanaticism? Or he's democratic, he's republican, or he's for the poor? Or the poor? Who are these things? He's eating the poor class. Let's just vote for him. When at the end of the day, it's all the same. All they did here in America was to, for control of the people, they divided it up to Democratic and Republican. In order so anarchy and disarray won't go on just like in Muslim countries that's going on to overthrow governments, so that won't take place as a security, so that never happens. They came to divide up the party and to make the people think that voting has some type of an effect on the society. The reason why this president is in his office is because you didn't vote for him. That's a form of control. The reason why they put this in there to make you think you're the reason why the state of affairs are the way they are, are, the way they are because you didn't vote for them. It's a form of control. But however, in the end, they know they're the ones that already what already had him ready before they even put your vote in. They already knew. And we'll talk about that on later cases exactly what happened with even what happened with the uh Preliminaries, what they get involved in. It's a whole different type of stages of what they came in and they want in the office. They come and nullify the votes. And the preliminaries, they don't want that person in office who they want. So at the end of the day, your vote didn't mean anything. It was useless. Even the non Muslims know this. What is it going to take for the Muslims now? It's embarrassing that a non Muslim tells you your vote don't mean nothing. And then you're not going to see it. When the Muslims told you and the Salafis told you, I gotta see for myself. I'm gonna put my finger in the honey and taste it. So now when a Catholic tell you, yeah, you wasted your time. We we already know who's going in the office before he goes in. And at the end of the day, you you these people here say in America, what do they say in every what, what do they say in their uh what, what is it, the anthem that they say? Oh, 
and to the republic for which it stands. To the republic for which it stands. Democracy is not even in there. It's not even the equation. So what, it's already one side. It's to the what? It's to the republic already. Democracy is not even an issue. You, you study this nonsense. The, the non-Muslims say this to your face every day. Guys, we really don't care about you people in the hood that vote or not. This stuff don't mean nothing at the end of the day. We know y'all knuckleheads don't even understand the terms we use it. Which is true. You're in the commercials, you sitting there in front of the preliminaries. You're like, what is he talking about? I don't even know what he's talking about. I'm going to vote for him. I don't know what he's talking about. You know what he's talking about? I don't know either. So you going to vote for him? Yeah, he sound good. He sound good. He sound good to me. We're going to vote for him. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. That's <laughs> because I'm the other guys. He was for, we'll continue to buy the Muslim Allah, the Muslim Baraka, and the Bina Muhammad, and the Sahih. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهر الله إلى هنا أنت استغفرك وتوبي إليك